Hello, welcome to Movie Night Movie Review. Tonight's movie is Age of Consent, the spoiler review. And Age of Consent does star James Mason, Helen Mirren, and Jack McGowan. The movie is from 1969 and is based on the novel by Norman Lindsay. Essentially an everyman's fantasy story, but a good one. And based on a somewhat true story about a real artist who had this similar adventure and a real sketch that still survives today of the real Cora. James Mason plays Bradley Morahan, a successful New York painter who has become disenchanted and weary of painting the same old paintings. He longs for home, which was Queensland, Australia, and he longs to recapture his youth and early inspiration again. He rents a shack on a small island off the Great Barrier Reef and moves in with his dog Godfrey a very pleasant dog. Stocked with food, drink, and his oil paints, he starts by turning the shack into a wonderful work of art in its own right, which is very cool. You can see that in the movie. I would love to actually do that as well someday. The island is a tropical paradise inhabited by fruit bats and several fascinating people content to have the world simply pass them by. The granddaughter of one of the residents is a young girl named Cora, played by Helen Mirren. She supports her alcoholic uh, grandmother by selling crayfish and oysters to the store on the mainland. And her dream is to move away uh, to Brisbane and become a hairdresser. Bradley finds her charming and agrees to help her by paying her to model for him. She, th- she eventually becomes the inspiration he needed, and he begins to paint again and live again with new vigor. Cora becomes his muse. But it is quite a, a wonderful movie, really, to see. A lot of people forget that Helen Mirren was actually young once and was quite a knockout, um, quite a babe. <laughs> But uh, she uh, early in her career, though, she was a theater actress, part of the Royal Shakespearean Company. And so she had uh, some pretty good acting uh, abilities to begin with. So um, Our only frame of reference a lot of us have for her is mainly more her recent uh, movies that she's done in the past 20 years or so. Like uh, she was in The Madness of King George. Uh, 2010, The Year We Made Contact. Uh, She was in the movie The Queen, where she played Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, And even more recently, she was in some of the the Fast and the Furious franchise as well. One interesting thing to note is uh, Helen Mirren in this movie looks strikingly a lot like the real Cora that uh, I've seen a sketch of. The sketch is hard to find, but she does look a lot like her, the same build, same hair, the same, uh, basically the same kind of face. Now, uh, early in the movie, I did uh, touch on this already, that uh, the artist Bradley, played by James Mason, is disenchanted with his life and his artwork. But uh, one interesting thing I wanted to point out, though, was, uh, and I didn't do it in my last video, is the veteran actor Frank uh, Thring. Uh, makes an appearance early in this movie. I just wanted to point him out because uh, the the other the other uh, place I've seen him in was the movie The uh, King of Kings with Jeffrey Hunter, who played Jesus, so, and he played uh, Herod Antipas, and he did uh, a remarkable job of that. Now, one thing I didn't touch on in my uh, other video was that uh, there was a young man that was in Cora's life as well. Uh, you can see him pictured in the bottom section of this picture. But, uh, yeah, he was spurned, uh, let's just say, by Cora, um, whose Cora's attentions were on Bradley at this point. So he was uh, summarily rejected. <laughs> you have to see the movie, but uh, he gets uh, dumped in the drink <laughs> so by Cora, and uh, that pretty much settles uh, that that aspect of that story. So. And just to restate again, Cora is quite a wild child in this movie. Um, she's unfettered, <laughs> totally. And there's a scene that I'll touch on again where she is alone 
in the cabin where she lives and uh, kind of goes through a moment of self-discovery as a woman and during the scene I don't think it was accidental they really do a lot of close-ups of her body and legs and things like that and you can just see how wild and hairy <laughs> and fuzzy and uh, ungroomed she is as a, a woman but uh, it's really part of her character I don't think Helen Mirren uh, normally look that way. I just think that was part of her characterization, but uh, it's it's an interesting moment so to see in the movie. So, and just like I stated in the first review, uh, Cora is not uh, ashamed to uh, take her clothes off to, and get nude and go swimming. And uh, Helen Mirren did a nice job uh, with these moments in the movie. Uh, this is actually Helen Mirren you see in the diving sequences. It's not a stunt double. So, and these are some of the scenes that uh, stand out and make this movie special and memorable. So, uh, she did a very nice job with it. Cora's big uh, ambition is to save enough money to travel to Biz Brisbane and to become a hairdresser. And she, what she does is she has to hide her money. In some uh, rocks that are out on the beach somewhere and uh, she has to hide them basically from her grandmother who is a uh, really nasty uh, alcoholic uh, jealous woman uh, jealous of Cora's uh, youth and beauty and a number of problems she has but uh, so she hides her money but uh, unfortunately the grandmother finds the money and uh, Cora discovers this, and uh, the two of them get into a tussle at the cliff's edge uh, by the woods. And uh, accidentally, the old lady falls off the cliff and breaks her back and neck or something like that. And that's how she's, uh, you know, uh, eliminated from the story. Now, this is uh, creates a big uh, concern because uh, Bradley is... Uh, coming to see her at this moment and uh, they're sort of discovered in this moment and uh, but anyway so they what they do is they uh, they act as if the old lady was just drunk which she was all the time and just happened to fall now the police uh, believe this they have no problem believing it because uh, she's drunk all the time and she's nasty and you know so they, they know the story they know the story so so they dodge a, a, a big bullet with that one, but uh, now uh, Bradley's friend uh, Nat, who comes uh, from the city uh, to see him on the island, is also another what I would call annoying sort of comedy relief character. And uh, you know what, I, I th I'm, I'm starting to formulate this, this theory that movies back then, uh, when they were dealing with taboo subjects like... Uh, like this one with an older man younger girl relationship they often feel like they needed to interject you know some sort of comedy relief to sort of uh, water down uh, the seriousness of the taboo nature of the story after all uh, Bradley is if I were to guess say he's 50 48 and uh, Cora is I'm guessing 17 so uh, it's it's a a bit of a taboo subject even by today's standards but getting back to it uh, Nate is uh, or Nat is discovered that he is a bit of a thief and a mooch <laughs> and uh, he gets caught stealing uh, Bradley's uh, pretty much all of Bradley's money and a uh, deal is worked out where they won't press charges but he has to uh, leave the island immediately and not come back. This frees up the story now to return back to the Bradley Cora storyline, which is what we were all kind of hoping to see. But uh, like I said, these these couple annoying characters are are dealt with, and and they, we move on and we move back to the story of Bradley and Cora. So now, one thing we didn't touch on much in the first review was that uh, Cora actually is f pretty much in love with Bradley at this point. Bradley, though, is a bit of a, I don't know, shy and reserved and is uncertain how to express this back to Cora. So uh, Bradley even 
uh, I guess mistakenly leaves Cora with the impression that this whole thing with uh, painting her and using her as his muse was just a business transaction which uh, Cora finds quite distressing because she has real feelings for Bradley but Bradley does too but he just can't express them he's just not built that way Bradley does finally uh, summon the courage though to make it clear to Cora though that uh, it was all about her it's not about the business transaction or the money that it's always been her and that his eyes are open now and that I like how she puts it to him she says that uh, well what are you gonna do about it <laughs> so it's a wonderful final uh, moment in the in the movie and uh, it's just a wonderful movie period and uh, you can download this movie or I would recommend getting the uh, Michael Powell uh, restored DVD version which has uh, deleted scenes added back in and the restored original music which uh, I've heard both cuts and uh, I like the restored original music better for this movie so I highly recommend you see it